Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what web authentication is and how we can configure it on our wireless LAN controllers. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topic covered as part of this video is 5.4b, which is to configure and verify web auth. So first things first, let's take a look at what web authentication is and how it works. So web authentication is a layer 3 security method of authenticating devices. So by using web authentication, it allows us to present users with interactive content that they can interact with before being granted access to the network. This could be a splash page displaying information about the business when joining a guest wireless network, or a screen to accept the terms of service. When a device is connecting using web authentication, the client can only send DHCP and DNS traffic until they've passed a form of authentication. As you can imagine, web authentication is most commonly used for guest and customer wireless networks to allow guests to authenticate or accept usage terms before using a wireless network. There are four modes available within the Cisco Wireless LAN controller for web authentication. These are authentication. This requires a user trying to authenticate with the network to enter a username and password in order to gain access. The authentication for the user can be checked against Radius, LDAP, or locally on the wireless controller. The next method is pass-through. This method requires the user to accept an agreement prior to gaining access to the network. This method does not require username or password from the user in order to authenticate. However, there is a configurable option in order to request an email for identity purposes. Thirdly, conditional web direct. This method is used for businesses selling access to the network. For example, a hotel chain. The user will be displayed a splash page. Once accepted, the client will be redirected again to another page for things like billing. Finally, splash page web redirect. This method is used to redirect the user authenticating to the wireless network to another web page once they've successfully authenticated. This could be that the user is redirected to the company's website once they've authenticated with the WebAuth SSID. So there are a number of benefits to using web authentication for your wireless network. The main advantages of using web authentication is the familiarity for users. Users are used to having to accept terms and conditions when accessing wireless networks and understand how the process works. Along with this, it can also provide identity-based access for guests depending on the user account used to authenticate. We can provide access to the network based on a specific user. Along with this, it can also provide identity-based access for guests depending on the user account used to authenticate with the SSID. We can provide access to the network based on the specific user. The next reason for using web authentication is that it doesn't require the user to download or use any additional software. All that's required is a web browser on the device. In addition to this, the web authentication screen shown to users is extremely customizable. We can customize the page displayed to users on the web authentication SSID using our own HTML file. Finally, it can also provide a more in-depth visibility of the network by attaching users and emails to devices connected to the network. So now we understand what web authentication is and the benefits it provides, let's take a look at how we can configure this on our wireless LAN controller. So the first thing we need to do is create our guest wireless network. So to do this, we'll just log into the controller and then go to Advanced. From here, we'll then go to WLANs at the top We'll then select to create our guest wireless profile and enter the required information. Once we click apply, we'll be able to amend the configuration further. To start with, we'll enable the SSID and select the correct interface we want to use. In this case, we'll use our guest interface. Next up, we'll go to the Security tab. What we want to do first of all is select None on our Layer 2 security. The reason for this, if you remember, is that web authentication is a Layer 3 method of authentication. As such, let's go over to our Layer 3 tab. You can see within here on the drop-down, we can select Web Policy. We'll then get a notification, however, this is okay to ignore for now. Now that web policy has been selected, you can see that we now get the option to select the mode of web authentication we want to use. For this example, I'll keep this selected as authenticated. So that's all the configuration we're going to apply to our SSID for now. So let's quickly apply this to the running configuration. The next thing we need to do is configure the web authentication itself. 
To do this, we need to go to security at the top and then select web auth on the left. From here, we'll then select the web login page. Once the page loads, we can see that we can decide if we want to host the web authentication locally on the controller or externally. In this example, we'll keep it as internal Cisco kindly provide a very basic web authentication page that can be customised slightly using the fields below. You can see that in this example I'm using the headline of Guest Internet and a message that tells the user to accept the EULA, which in this case doesn't exist yet. We have the ability to preview this page without the need to connect to the SSID by selecting Preview at the top right. Once we're happy with the configuration, all we need to do is press Apply and that's all the configuration required to set up a very basic web authentication. There are a number of ways we can verify the web authentication configuration. First of all, by going to the WLANs at the top. From here, under security policies for our guest SSID, we can see that it's configured for web auth. Another method is to connect to the SSID and confirm the web authentication is working as required. This will confirm that we received the web authentication page correctly and can then authenticate and access the network. And there we have it, that's a complete overview of web authentication and how we configure and verify it within our wireless LAN controllers. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP Enterprise videos. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.